Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. This is video is part two uh, regarding the subject what I did earlier. Uh, it's a history of uh, civilization, actually the beginning of the civilization, how we become civilized. <laughs> and um, I cover up so many subjects actually I covered about the burials, about the uh, famous Gyobekli uh, Tepe, Chetol Kuyuk, and the city Jericho and so on. I cover up uh, Neolithic era. Earlier we spoke about Paleolithic era, you know Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, tools, you know, etc. Here we are in Neolithic era. I'm going to talk a lot about pottery, irrigation, hierarchy, um, some first um, Neolithic settlements. Neolithic, you know what does mean Neolithic, right? It's a new stone age when we really, really became uh, settlers, when we became uh, farmers, you know, we finished the hunter-gathering and uh, we uh, took a decision to settle in one place. So I add in this uh, video, I added something new that's not majorly new, but uh, it's quite exciting and a little bit different than previous video. Uh, so I hope you'll enjoy it. And uh, see you. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. 7,500 years ago, Gebekli Tepe, by the way, Gebekli Tepe translated as a belly hill because uh, the area was built on the hills. And uh, if you're going to translate it from the Turkish, Göbek, it means belly, and Tepe means as a hill. So, uh, belly hill, right? So, Göbekli Tepe was left 7,500 years ago. Uh, it was left aimly, it was left in purpose. And who left? Those people who used to live in Göbekli Tepe, they buried the place. They didn't just like, you know, pack the bags and Habibi, bye bye, let's go from here, uh, enough, we don't want any more. No, nothing like that. They bury. They bury the complex, they bury, me, they bury the, this uh, monumental, uh, monolithic uh, stones. Uh, they bury the settlement and they left. And we don't know until now what was the reason. We have a lot of opinions and a, a lot of views and the archaeologists and the historians, they dispute between each other to give an answer, but still we don't have one nice reason why this um, site was, archaeologic site, was uh, buried and left. Most probably it was left because they finished the food around it, but buried, why, we don't know, but this is the most the most the most beautiful thing what they could do for for the history because they bury it and they save the archaeologic sites and the people who found it they they are in shock because they the things are quite in good condition rather than for example Stonehenge was built and left right and it was um, cut it in, in the small pieces until you bring the excavators and put it back oh my god but here Göbekli Tepe the belly hill in southern Turkey, the first and oldest religion center buried, and we have it in a good, I mean, almost in a perfect condition. However, those people who left the place, they didn't go so far because we have a Neolithic set settlements, which is the famous one is um, Jericho in Palestine. Uh, Chatol Hoyuk nearby Gebekli Tepe and Navalachuri. Navalachuri and the, the Chatol Hoyuk they are still in um, Anatolia area, which which is uh, southern Turkey. But uh, Jericho is quite far Levant area, you know, in Palestine. However, we in here we found resembled things, almost the same things. Um, stones, tools, how you artifacts, which is really, really same as in Gebekli Tepe. So when the Gebekli Tepe le left the place, they, they didn't die. I mean, they didn't extinct, like, you know, nothing happened. So these people, they travel to another place and they settle in another place. 
But in these three areas, like Jericho, Nevalachuri, and Chatal Huyuk, 100% those settlements are Neolithic settlements because here we have strong farmer wing. So we are now farmers. We settled. We finished this uh, game, hunter gathering game, and we settled and we become a farmer. So we took a control over our own destiny. We are going to control the nature, we are going to control this uh, wild wheat, or already maybe it become a wheat which is uh, close to ours. Anyway, we are going to control it and we are going to fill our bellies with the food. So these three sites, again I am going to uh, repeat, Jericho, Navalachuri and Chatalhayuk, 100% Neolithic, uh, Neolithic um, archaeologic sites. Jericho considered the oldest city in the world. Yes. Uh, when when it's come, wh why we calling it a city? Because the population, the the urban and inhabitants of uh, Jericho is have a, um, have highest numbers. There is a lot of skeletons found there, guys, and it has a walls, and it has a tower which doesn't have other settlements by if you want to calculate it by time Jericho considered the oldest city why because more population live there uh, city has a walls and it has a tower the tower purpose we still didn't understand why it was there is a tower and it's a only one tower why it was used in a religion purpose or it was used as a you know uh, to defend the city as a fortification, we don't know, but it is there. So, Jericho, um, the all uh, as I said, the oldest city in the world considered. However, there is a new settlement which found uh, in uh, Syria, around twenty-five kilometers far from Aleppo. Um, recently not recently when we had the problems you know problems in syria um, before war uh, poland archaeologists they were working on the site and they start to say um, and spread information that talman is the oldest than jericho still it's under the dispute not proved under the construction instruction how you want to go um, we didn't prove it yet, but we have uh, one of the one of the opinions about this one that it might be also the more older than uh, Jericho. Chetal uh, Huyuk. I'm going to speak soon. I'm going to make it a uh, different video, which we're going to de dedicate only to Jericho, only to the Nebel Churi, only to the Gepekli Tepe, and only to the Chetal Huyuk. But um, as I said, I'm giving you just um, brief, <laughs> in the brackets, briefly and basic information. So you can, upon that, we can add more information and you can build it up the, the um, information in a bigger manner. Chetal Huyuk is the first settlement with uh, houses. Uh, houses are quite interesting because the, the, those uh, houses in Chetal Huyuk doesn't have, um, it, it don't have doors and the entrance through the roof. We don't know why, but again, we can assume that it was in purpose of security. So there is no doors and you're going to enter through the roof. As you see in the picture, like, you know, a top and there is another one, another block and there is a roof. The funny thing that you're going to cook inside, so the chimney and the exit was in one way so i believe if a lady was cooking inside she has to leave the place the other people has to leave otherwise they were going to smell this smell because they cook inside we proved that it was like a chimney come exit 
So the significant and interesting uh, thing in Chatal Khuyuk was that the, the houses have no doors and the entrance and exit through the roof. Also, since we it's uh, those blocks build it very tight to each other, there is no streets. So they don't have streets as well. And uh, but uh, Chetal Hoyuk, uh, they had domestication of animals, right? They had they domesticated goats. They found a lot, a lot, a lot of bones of the goats and uh, farming. 100% Chetal Hoyuk people, they were farmers. We are already in Neolithic era where the sheep was domesticated, where it was the goat was dom dom domesticated, and there, is a, there was a, um, also, I forgot the name, unfortunately, the name of the donkey. It's not 100% the donkey or the horse, but uh, it lived in the Middle East area, that animal also domesticated. So, 7,000, 8,000 years ago, Asian people from Middle East, they start to be settled. What I mean, they start to be farmers, we cancelled the hunter-gathering, we became uh, really farmers and we start to domesticate animals. So this is the bullet points, you have to memorize it. We become settlers, we start to build the cities, we start to walk or run after the wild animals and look for the wild the fruits, berries, the vegetables, so on. We start to take over control in our hands in Neolithic era. Neolithic era also divides in some parts. Uh, I will highlight it later and which part, but main we enter to the Neolithic era. We finish the Paleolithic, we enter to Neolithic era. So in Neolithic era, we start to become a settlers. Uh, while uh, if we're going to take uh, India or China, Southeast Asia areas, People just start to get know about the rice. Nothing um, important settlement, not important cities. There is no farming yet, what I mean. Maybe they domesticated um, dog, cat, uh, goat, sheep, but, but we calculating Neolithic era with the farming, with the settling in one place. So even like if you want to take an Indian region, uh, rice was domesticated three times. Uh, it wasn't like one time domestication. No, they was like domesticated. It didn't work out. Cancel. Again, domesticated. It didn't work out. Cancel. So in India region, it happened three times. Uh, Chetal Huyuk and Jericho, significantly, these both cities were famous with what? They were famous with the metal, guys. We found metal there. It's a really a revolutionary thing because we were using a stone, 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 stick, bones, and a uh, piece of wood, you know, and suddenly we start to use new tools. For example, uh, even in Jericho, we found obsidian. You know, obsidian, it's quite sharp. Uh, piece of stone. It's uh, it's not the metal, but however, metal w was found very very in big quantities, and the purpose of using the metal, uh, I will tell what kind of metal it was. Lead. The purpose of using the metal, you will need to kill birds, for again for your tummy to eat it, right? So, along with the metal slings, it was found the dead bodies of the birds. I mean the the bones of the bone also the idea of cult uh, idea of religion remember people of Gebekli Tepe who left their places they brought with them those ideas and the motives because we said we found the similarities uh, when we're talking about here art and belief and the cult for example uh, as you see in the picture this is the archetype of fertility goddess who was a named uh, masters of the animals, right? Why archetype? Because f after this madam, we have a lot of similar resem resembles of the art. Uh, just imagine Babylon king around him lions, right? You just imagine Shiva around him tigresses. So the motives 
you can find that you can find in middle east and south asia in south europe and north africa um, even later period we can find them the, mo the motif like a person and around them animals like uh, tutankhamun if you're going to look at the chair of the, of the throne of the tutankhamun you can see the handles of the chair also shape of the paws so you know it's like a master of the animal i'm cool i'm i'm cool i'm master i'm a king of animal these motifs also they come from this fertility fertility goddess which uh, were founded in chatelhuyuk so she is the archetype we consider her as an archetype if you like look nicely and and the picture as you see um, closer you know if you look at her shoulders it's the tails from the right and the left uh, the tails of this let's say cat or lion or panther and a panther it was south america so let's call it cat big cats right <laughs> because we don't know what's exactly animal but it's quite big size so let's say lion the the tail of the lions they like surrounding her you know it's like they are worshiping her they are believing in her it's like a, like hugging you know when the, the cats come to you they hug with their tails it's some similarity so we make a conclusion that these animals are worshiping this fertility goddess and that's an important thing uh, that's very important thing and lovely and my favorite part it's uh uh, interesting and shocking at the same time the people of Chatalkuyuk for example I let's say me I will take myself as an example someone in my family Auzubala died uh, in one place on his on its bed for example got sick I don't know catch flu so in the room the person dies on its bed the bed removes or maybe they slip in the ground we just assume we just just pretend that we just imagine how the the historians they are telling to us so let's say no bad they are laying on the ground and the person got sick and die so as a member of the family if i'm the main of course main i think will take uh, responsibility they're going to dig up the, that place where exactly the body was died and bury there inside and they live happily after in the same place so if you're watching tv i don't wish to any one of you it happen like that but just imagine if somebody watching tv and his grandparent or let's say let's say grandfather die on the sofa they remove the sofa they dig that place they put that body there and they put it back all the furniture and they leave it like nothing happened so the the burial place was exactly in the same place of where they used to live so as you see in this picture you see the house house so the exit and entrance from the room so inside 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 there in the room where you're cooking where you're sleeping where you're playing nintendo it's there the body there is no idea that uh, they didn't take out the body out of the living area and they created cemetery and you know they buried there nothing like that that's what when archaeologists they discovered they were struck because they didn't know any bodies around that the settlement all bodies was inside so it was the settlement and the cemetery at the same time another shocking <laughs> another shocking thing that they before they bury the dead body they cut their heads yes so they cut their heads they buried just the body they covered the soil they returned their furniture or i don't know mattress or however you want to call in ancient time they live after but the body there was without head and what they used to do with the head they used to make up behind the head nice round hole remove what was inside right we call it the brain uh, remove the hair shape it and clean it very nicely then bring plaster plaster is like a soft clay you know and make uh, surgery or cosmetic surgery i don't know they do did the faces so they reinstalled the the muscles of the face and they 
covered and they do new face, they shape it off. Because, you know, it's a skull and instead of eyes, also they remove the eyes, they put uh, some shells. So it will be like resemble like uh, eyes, you know, looking at you or something like that. And they put on their uh, shelves. So it's like a Polaroid of ancient times. I don't know, to, to or to pray or to give a respect or to not forget their ancestors. There is a lot of opinions and views why they used to like that, but isn't it shocking? The, the oldest the oldest skull, which was, uh, you know, clean it from the brain, clean it from the hair, clean it from everything, shape it up, put it with the, uh, the eyes was filled up with the shells and uh, the face wholly built from the plaster was found in Jericho. Uh, it was, uh, men around they give I think if my memory doesn't betray me around 50 years old and they found it had the uh, it didn't had the lower jawline it had the only upper jawline maybe they removed the lower jaw jawline as well or maybe it's dropped off we don't know we don't know so he's uh, without lower jawline the skull and it has a cavity so that man had a lot of problem with the teeth they found the in his uh, mouth, a lot of problems. Specifically, there was a cavities, and the 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 there is two wisdom tools, I think, which is didn't go out. Uh, important, al muhum, how the Arabs say, they found a lot of cavities in it. So after scalping the face, they also die with the okhra. So they give a they give a tan, they give a color for the. I think to resemble a little bit the skin tone, the color with the okra, uh, the paint with the okra. And uh, in fertile crescent in Middle East, we spread a new cult, which is calling a skull cult, because these areas are full with a skull cult. Right, we uh, found in uh, Palestine, we found in Turkey, we found in, as I said earlier, in Ain Ghazal, which is um, 25 kilometers from, from Aleppo, Syria. We found in Jordan. Uh, so, yeah, after, as I said, after sculpting these people or their relative, they put on the shelf and let's say contact with them or pray to them or some sort of respect to their ancestors. We don't know exactly what was in their, exactly what was in their ha ha head. It's, it's wonderful how, how these three settlements, they have resembled beliefs, the skull um, cult. And uh, as I said, we don't know exactly what was the reason of them doing like that, you know, cutting the body and taking the skull and reshaping it and, and uh, sculpturing the face from maybe maybe it's some sort of a reincarnation maybe we we don't know exactly around seven thousand six thousand years ago we domesticated piggies and at this time started china to grow rice so you memorize it in this way right in Middle East, we are coming friends with the piggies. And in China, we having uh, start to grow rice. Uh, in Asia, later on, after the piggies, we're going to domesticate the cows. And here start very interesting thing, guys. Oh my God. Because, because, let's take a peek. Wonderful animal for the Asian people, for, we're not going to bring now Islam haram and you know not allowed we were going to leave the religion part but for the Asian people it was a piece of cake piggies oh my god first of all how wonderful this animal machine I, I like to call it machine is it is going to eat all your leftovers everything any garbage any piece of shell some roasted plants spoil it food and it will eat and make it fat itself and bring us meat that's the unique machine right you cleaning your all your garbage and itself becoming for you fat and tasty and bingo you covering up from nothing 
from the garbage you're getting something. How much useful this animal is. And, and cows and the uh, swine and the cows, guys. Oh my God, that's another wonderful thing they are giving comparing to the sheep and goat. I don't laugh. You might laugh. <laughs> Because they, the, the quantity of what cow and uh, pig giving, goat and uh, sheep cannot give. If you face it in your life, if you go to, you know, to the village and you, you might compare. I'm talking about the dung. I'm talking about the poop. So the cow and the pig poops was quantity was quite big <laughs> comparing to the goats you know goats and uh, i'm sorry to say that and uh, sheep they shit in a teeny tiny and it's not that much valuable comparing let's say cow cow how a wonderful animal cow it give you dunk dunk and dunk and why we need dunk exactly to put on our field and we're going to have a lot of wheat because we know dung uh, helps to grow any crop, anything in a um, faster manner and better manner, however you want, you, want, you want to call it, however you want to name it. So successfully Middle Eastern, they domesticated cow and swine. Successfully, they start to get from there a lot of dung plus cow giving a milk, right? And the swine, already fat, also giving a dunk. Imagine, so you don't have to run after gazelle to collect the meat, you know, over all the savanna. It's poop and it's tiring. Imagine you go to savanna and you run after gazelle. Mr. Gazelle, please, can you make a little bit dung because I want to put on my field so I'll have a lot of crops. Here you are, here you, here you have a, pig and swine I mean and you have a cow which is they don't have to run anywhere and it's here and ready and that's amazing that's amazing so you have a question now 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 you have an, a lot of answers for your question why guys this why Elnora this fertile crescent calling a fertile crescent come on let's take our fingers okay we're going to count South America, no domestication is happening yet. If they domesticated, they domesticated whom? Pumpkin. And why did they domesticate the pumpkin? For the back, not for the food. The priority of domestication of pumpkin was, was back, to make a bag. Later they understand that we can, they can make it food and all the so on. Africa, Africa crop is a yum not wow food comparing to the wheat now middle east what we have we have wheat we have lentil we have peas we have wild wheat we have different two three types of crops this is all happening uh, uh middle east and pastoralism yeah and the domestication of the animals in a quite short period started and also fertile crescent right we have a uh, cow, we have pig, we have goat, we have dogs. Later we're having a uh, uh, horse and then camels. This too much, too much uh, valuable domestication is pushing up us to develop in better and more and faster manner, right? While we have uh, in China, we have uh, domestication of chicken, which is comes very late or Peru we have llama also coming late or Egypt or we have a goose domesticated also coming late comparing to the uh, to the Middle East to the fertile crescent and uh, like Africans they couldn't uh, domesticate uh, zebras like Europeans also they fell with domestication of uh, zebras until now they couldn't domesticate it that's wonderful like I know some people, they're even dom trying to domesticate a uh, fox uh, in Russia. So we have a lot of things going on in Fertile Crescent. Hop, we have domesticated the pig. Hop, we domesticated cow. Hop, we have a sheep. Hop, we have a goat. We have a poop to fertile, uh, to bring uh, those poop dunks to our f farming area, to the field, to bring wild wheat. We have in abundance food that we really take a control, we took a control over the nature 
becoming a strong, strong settlers in Neolithic era. We said that the cats were domesticated cats all after the dogs. Uh, another animal was domesticated. Was uh, it was a cat, uh, and we said earlier that it was uh, useful because uh, y the the place where you storage your crops, mice and rats will come and eat it up. So the cats were helping us to to kill them, and terminate those rats. Because uh, you used to, p we used to put the food where, guys, where, of course, in the basket, right? Basketry was oh my god, so much de developed since Paleolithic time. We grab that skill to the Neolithic as well. That's why we're calling a pre-pottery age. So we have a Paleolithic, uh, we have a Neolithic. And the Neolithic, after Neolithic comes pre-pottery. So we start to become a farmers. Then we have an a era, which is calling a pre-pottery, while we're still not using a um, pottery, right? The pots, the dishes, which done from the clay. So the cats were helping us to kill all those rats and mice, so on. And we, how come we come to to the pot for the pottery because uh, we had a urge to use those dish dishes um, because we having a crops and the cat cannot kill all the mice and rats uh, however when you do a big jar and you put inside the crops, I don't think so any rat or cat make a hole inside that jar and grab your food. While in the baskets, because the baskets, most of the baskets, all of the baskets done by plants and the rats, for mice and rats, it's two seconds, they will make a hole and enter inside your basket and eat your food, right? But here we have a jar, it's hard, uh, the teeth of Madame Rat cannot break it anything, so as I said, we had an urge to create the pottery. The, the funny thing, <laughs> again, I want to highlight that the, the pottery already was developed and we had the pottery, but not in the Middle East. It was uh, in Europe, right? We have, uh, we found the dishes in Bulgaria specifically and the oldest cult, one of the oldest cult, the Venus, we found in Czech Republic uh, 29 years ago, and it was uh, done from clay, from burned clay. Uh, and uh, we have a uh, vessels 10,000 years ago, while in the Middle East we just was building those, we were busy with the building um, in uh, Gubekli Tepe, the stone, the complex in uh, Japan. Yes, guys, in Japan, in that island, the biggest island what uh, Japan has, they found the vessels from clay. And uh, they weren't just like simple, they were um, with design, you know, some, as you see in the picture here. So we had the pottery, but not in the Middle East. This is another surprising and lovely thing. For example, uh, a lot of uh, pottery examples, uh, they, were, they, they were found in Balkan region. Bulgaria, one of the, the famous one. Uh, however, we got different types of innovation in different cultures, which is spread along Euphrates and Tigris River. So we know what is that? I I'm going to share with you. So we know um, we have a we have in our hand wheat. We know how to uh, take care about it. How we know how to bring the food. We know how to spread the seeds into the field. We know how to bring the wheat, right? We know already. But we start to. <coughs> Uh, we have uh, domesticated uh, animals, we have eno an enough poop and dunk, and we face with something like, uh, okay, I'm having a difficulty with the water. We need water, guys. Why are we roaming around everywhere 
uh, and we are not what the heck we're roaming around everywhere guys and we're not finding the place where is a lot of water because I'm really tired from one place to another place to bring uh, water to you know to um, water my plants we know that the Middle East area, the Dead Sea area, the, it was uh, abundance with the water. However, it wasn't like structured comparing to Euphrates and Tigris. That was another move to go to big rivers. It's amazing, amazing place. Here we're starting our irrigation. Here we're starting our history. Here we're starting with uh, development of the channels. Here we're starting to water our fields properly. Here we start to learn what is the, what is means real farming in Mesopotamia between Tigris and Euphrates. So basically we dig out waterways from the river to bring required water to our fields. You know, if you're going to look at the map, just in, on the world map, the first settlements advanced settlements not like uh, small settlements but complicated advanced settlements they started where if you're going to take a middle east it's euphrates and tigris right if you're going to go china we have yansi and huanhe rivers if you're going to central asia we have amudarya and sudarya if you're going to india and pakistan there is a gang and int and uh, our superhero in Egypt is a Nile. Nile is a, I don't know how, it, it's a, the god of the rivers. That's Egypt and Sudan and uh, Ethiopia are really, really lucky with this river. Italy, Po and Tiber, so on, so on. So I want to say the settlements, they, the big settlements, the significant settlements, the important settlements, all they started around the rivers. So I have enough water, I will have enough uh, to water, I, I have rivers, I have enough water to water my water fields, to bring the crop, and I'll not have a problem with the watering my field, and so on, you know, because there is a drought, and so on. So why are we having a roaming around all here and bringing water from there while we can settle our place and our house exactly next to the source of water which is a river so those rivers the first rivers was Euphrates and Tigris uh, pre neolithic uh, sorry pre pottery pre pottery neolithic sites it's uh, Hasuta Samarra and Khalaf culture yeah uh, I'm going to make another video about this one, uh, about this uh, pre-pottery, but I would like to talk about a little bit about Ubaid culture, because it's a, it's a lovely, it's a creme. From among all these uh, sites, I found that Ubaid culture is uh, like a creme on the top of the cake. So Ubaid culture is uh, occupying the Gulf area, which is which is a Persian or Arabic uh, Gulf, how you want to call whatever. I, I, I'm, I don't mind, you can call it Persian, you can call it Arabic. So it's it's there. What is the difference and what is why it's Ubaid culture is interesting and important? Because first of all, they have longer and organized channels. Why longer channels? Why we need longer channels? Because river behave differently. So sometimes you have a lot of water, sometimes you don't. When you have a lot of water, it's going to out of your border and it's going to destroy all your field. When you have a less water, your field is going to dry out. But when you have a longer channels and more organized channels, the water supply is organized and irrigation is much more organized. You're not going to face any problem. That's, that's the significant and most important highlighted um, uh, character or aspects of the of the Ubaid culture. They had uh, they had a very evaluated uh, technical work. We're calling it technical work. Of course, it's like you are changing the uh, waterway of the river and uh, you making towards to your fields and making a longer longer channels. 
to water your crops. It is, it's a boom. I, I, I can call it on it as a, it's a, like a boom. So settlement started with starting point, we will take a 10,000, 10,000, 8,000, 7,000, 5,000, and then changing for the better, for better life. Uh, the things becoming more developed. We have a much more advanced tools. We have a technical tools, which we use it on the daily basis. Of course, uh, the technical work itself coming better and connection between each other also it's coming better because we found the artifacts for, from different places. For example, in Ubaid culture, which is almost in, um, not almost, it is in, uh, around the Persian Gulf, we found artifacts which come from the uh, northern Syria. Uh, that means we had a good communication skills, we had an exchange, we had a strong barter, so the, the goods uh, the exchange of the goods already existed in Mesopotamia. That means um, we start to have a strong sotsum and we start to have a pottery. Why, why Ubaid culture is very important? Because in Ubaid culture we found a lot of um, pottery artifacts, right? I mean uh, the quantity of the pottery it was so high uh, that resulted uh, us to conclude um, that the quantity of people also was high. So a lot of pots equals to a lot of people. We know we know that uh, once um, the pot is done from the clay, you cannot reuse it mul multiple times. Uh, there wasn't thing like I bring my favorite and bring my sponge and I wash it and I'm going to put it dry and then I'm going to use it next day. No, it wasn't like that. So once uh, inside, for example, I'll take um, just simple example, like we have oil, we put oil inside our pot, we cannot use it a second time. And we know if we're going to put on the old oil, the new oil, the new oil, it's going to be spoiled. So I have to bring a new pot, right? So the usage of the, pot, the pots, it was so high. The pottery industry was so developed in Ubaid culture that uh, bring us, I mean, that conclude us that uh, there were a living a high, uh, num num high number of the people. So that uh, al another point. So pottery, a lot of pots equal to the a lot of people. A lot of people e equals to the key development is socium. That means we can sit and deal with each other. We can find the solutions towards the problems. The socium coming advanced and complicated. For example, uh, I want to bring an example, for example, civilization in Kamaya, Aztec civilization were extremely late from development if comparing to the Mesopotamia, Indus Valley and China, extremely late because when the Europeans, they came, they were still in uh, China, extremely late because when the Europeans, they came, they were still in uh, Neolithic era, right? They didn't that much advance comparing to the Mesopotamia and Middle East or Egypt, so on. However, when the European they arrived to the uh, South America or Central America, let's say, uh, they found out that uh, the city uh, Tenochtitlan was uh, bigger than any random city in the Europe. That means they had. Um, very developed sotsum, which is all the time well maintained in political aspect. So it was centralized and well maintained. So coming back to Mesopotamia, so we're having a high quantity of the people, a lot of people. That means that's the well maintained area in political aspect. So we having a centralized somehow in the brackets, the beginning of the centralized government, right? So this one will lead us to the civilization. We know that one of the aspects 
uh, sorry, one of the points to be uh, to be a civilization, it has to be a political aspect. So the another revolutionary thing happened is the simple plow, right? The idea of plow. It's just simple, but how much it's advanced and give us opportunity to to industrialization. Next to it we had, uh, as we said, we had the discovery of pottery. However, pottery has existed a long time before, uh, but it arrived to Mesopotamia, and we had a coiling pottery, right? When you take a clay, you make it along, it's all handmade, guys, nothing, there is no any technical um, equipment behind that, so everything manually, you will take a clay, You'll make a long sausage, let's say like a spaghetti, as per picture as you see. Okay, and then you're going to round around uh, or your hand or you're just basically on calculating by eye. You're going to round, 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 round. Then you're going to smooth up the borders. Then you're going to dry and then burn. And then voila, you got your pot. So we had the coiling pottery in Ubaid culture, which still it was a revolutionary. But... It was everywhere actually coiling pottery. Everybody was doing or in a sausage and spaghetti type clay and then rounding or manually they were giving a shape. For example, what we found in Bulgaria was a coiling pottery 100%. What we found in Japan, it was all uh, handmade. So the people like, um, you know, when you took a squishy and you build it, it or something soft and you give a shape, it was all manual. But obeyed culture, bring brought obeyed culture brought revolutionary idea which changed a lot of things a lot of things so um, it's a wonderful machine it's considered first industrialization okay and uh, we don't have to now anymore spend our time to make a, this long spaghetti sausage type uh, clay shape to make a one pot or plate so we just put our hand into the clay give it whatever shape what you will like and voila within three five minutes we have a ready dish ready pots ready plates ready jars before when we spent uh, half day to make a one dish now we're spending three five minutes so it is pottery wheel that's the ever wonderful things and all the historians and archaeologists they love, love to highlight it because it was like huge step to enter the industrialization what uh, what um, pottery wheel gave us uh, it gave us first intelligent people what what does it mean first intelligent people first intelligent people the people who are not on survival mode. Yeah, Harry Potter, for example. <laughs> I'm going to remove the Harry, but just simple Potter become an um, intelligent person. He doesn't need to go work in the field. He doesn't need to go after the sheep or goat. No, when we're talking about domestication, right? He is not in survival mode. Now people coming to him. What does it mean industrialization here? Because the potter, he doing, he was doing a dish and that dish had a high demand. So the people really wanted dish because it was like um, on daily use. What, 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 what we nowadays use on the telephone, let's say, right? Uh, when the launch at the, the last of iPhone, we have a queue. So the same way, Potter did the something new jar and the people are standing in the queue. So we're having industrialization. And uh, Potters, they were intelligent, smart people. They didn't exchange food to the food. Before we had a barter, we used to exchange food to the food. For example, I have cherry, you have wheat. Uh, we, I give you a little bit cherry, you give me a little bit to eat. Voila, we have a barter. But here, what else they change the game? Now I have a jar. We're going to, I have a jar, you're going to give me food. So the, for the th now we're having goods, right? It's like 
first stuff of economics, like when goods entering, not the food, but the goods coming priority. Uh, we are going on from the basics. So pottery will change it, uh, our lifestyle extremely in a good way. As I said, if I spend half day to make a one dish, Potter he spent half day and he make a, like a masalan <laughs> fifty dishes. That's that's the amazing. So we abide culture is the famous uh, with the um, discovery and with the uh, idea of making a pottery wheel. Look at this! Look at this monochrome yellow cup. And look at how it designed it, you know, you don't believe, I don't believe that this cup was done so, so many years ago. It looked like, you know, they just done it and look at the flower. Oh my God, that it's a guys, what do you think, what kind of flower? Of course, of course it's a daisies. Daisies overall is a flower of Mesopotamia. You know, if we're going to go to Egypt, for example, in Egypt, the flower of uh, Egypt is a um, blue lily or white lily. Blue water lily, actually, right? Not lotus. Please don't mix with the lotus. We know lotus is belong to the India. It's come from the India. It is totally different flower. So Nile, it's a blue water lily, and Mesopotamia is the daisies. It's all about the daisies. After even after this um, Obeid culture, we'll have Assyrian Empire. You know, we have Babylon. You will see the motif of the daisies. It's everywhere. So we talk about non-potters, right? The pottery, potters, ceramic, all this work. It's perfect. It's uh, going on. Everybody doing their job. The farmer on the field, he's busy with the wheat. Potter and his pottery, busy with his ceramics and with his uh, dishes from the clay. But who's the boss? Who's the boss? Because Potter, not just like this, he will go and he will sleep. And next morning, you know, he will do like a five pieces. Or he will do the six pieces. Or then he will do like a two pieces. No. As I said, there was a strong hierarchy because the quantity of the pottery and the quantity of the people were too much high plus the place if you're going to you know if you're going to take a drone and you want to see that settlement from the up from the bird view you will see that this settlement it was so well structured it's so well maintained that it's absolutely there is someone who's uh, leading, who's ruling. Maybe we can call them um, gathered community of leaders, you know. But this is definitely authority. Uh, somebody gave orders, some people gave orders, and some people, they did the orders, 100%. In Obeid culture, another significant and most important, right, in our... Why it's the most important? Because we're going to hit civilization. One of the points of the civilization, you need to have... Uh, you need to have a leaders. You need to have bosses who is controlling you. You should have a central, centralized government. You should have an authority. That is the one, one of the points of the civilization. So, somebody doing the work, the order is coming, somebody completing that work. That is the concept of the power. That is the concept of authority. Without that authority or power or leaders, we would not have a complex community. Without that authority, we will not have uh, those quantity of the potteries for sure. You know, we, will, we will not have uh, people who digging the channels in a very constructive manner because as I said if you're going to look on the settlement if you're going to look at the settlement from the top using a drone a bird view you will see it's so well structured here I brought the picture you can see it how it's well structured so here we have a fields 
here we have a house, here we have a channel, so organize it. It cannot be just because I have beautiful eyes, somebody going to do this for me, right? It will not, uh, or I just I respect you, you listen my orders and then you will go and do. Absolutely not. So how are you going to, um, let's say, uh, complete this task being a boss, being a authority? There is a many ways how it's going to be happen or you're super you know strong or you're super smart or you can use you know frightening method or you can use the punishing method or you can use all your power or you can beat someone so they will do this uh, work nevertheless hierarchy it was there i believe that in the beginning it wasn't just single leaders it was the community of the leaders right they gather and they discuss so why I said earlier it was like a family because one family head he will be friend with another family head then together they're going to control they're going to listen they're going to obey some one of them will be stronger and smarter that's a, it's very very basic how you can imagine that so again I repeat obeyed culture uh, was famous with its hierarchy with its authority because the settlements were well maintained and we well organized it plus we are having commercial exchange as i said without commercial like how uh we said the potter pot, potter guys they exchange for the food but there is a out of the settlement right this is your settlement and there is other million settlements which uh, who have different products uh, for example the same obsidian so the commercial exchange also controlled by those hierarchy people. Most probably they say that there was a basic two level uh, hierarchy, which was like a basic, you know, president and who is obeying to the president. There wasn't like a prime minister and the assistant and secretary and deputy and CEO and SEO, nothing like that. So it was a very basic hierarchy when we're having two levels, boss and uh, who's working under the boss. And uh, I said that the commercial, there was a commercial exchange. When you're doing a commercial exchange, you should have a mass production. You will not do one dish and then you're going to you know, send it to another city, which is very ridiculous and obvious. We said the first industrialization started with the pottery. So you're going to do a lot of pottery of your own, obeyed culture, they had on their own specific one. So, and then you're going to send it to some place, you know, even in Indus Valley, even in Saudi Arabia, in Kuwait, in uh, southern Turkey, in Syria, we found those ceramics from the Ubaid culture because they ha they, their ceramic was uh, quite different than others. And why we're saying Ubaid culture, Ubaid culture, Ubaid? Because Shumer civilization or Sumers, they were in Ubaid culture. So Sumer or Shumer civilization based in based on obeyed culture that's it's another wonderful thing so that's why i really highlighted we're talking about the, how the civilization started uh, yeah and now we now understand that uh, shumer didn't just like this sleep and close eyes and voila we have a shumer civilization no. so before sumer civilization we had a obeyed culture with its own cities right uruk ur erido this cities cities were old i'm going to make a different video that's another uh, subject but i just want to highlight it about this information here this is part two we finish with a part two i'm going to make it part three and the part three i promise it's going to be for final i tried really squeeze and um, you know build the basement for you so in the future we're going to pull up from this um videos interesting parts where for example we'll talk only about the Gubit Litepe or we're going to talk, talk about only ab about obeyed culture right we're going to pull one by one but just as just uh, you consider as a skeleton uh, wait from me part um, three in part three we are going to talk about more religion 
uh, about uh, we're still talking about the obeyed culture um, we're do- going to talk about religion about uh, seals about many many things you will see so again thank you so much for watching my uh, video and see you till the next time